Okay, let's get started. Ghosts are real. That much I know. Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is the first time here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can get a notification every single time that I post a video and I post every single week. As you can see from the title of today's video, on my all horror movies reviews, we're going to be talking about the Fun House of 1981. Now, just like the title says, this is going to be a review with spoilers. I will not be giving a spoiler free review. So saying all that, let's get into the video. Now, Phone House is a 1981 slasher directed by Toby Hooper that follows four teenagers that visit a local carnival for a night of innocent amusement but soon discover that nothing there is as innocent or amusing. This is, in my opinion, an underrated slasher and yes, it's directed by the same guy that did Texas Chainsaw Massacre of 1974. So I think that that's a pretty good start in my opinion, although I am not the biggest fan of that film. But I know that many people it is. To give a brief summary, the film opens with a scene that resembles part of Psycho's shower scene and Halloween of 1978 opening scene. We have the point of view of the killer, we have a clown mask that is put on the camera and we see it throughout the eyes, but at the same time we have the female lead of this film that it's Amy. She's about to take a shower and some shots they're going to resemble frame by frame the psycho shower scene but it end up being all a prank by brother joey now amy is getting ready because she's about to go out with her boyfriend her best friend and her best friend's boyfriend to the carnival but according to her she's going to the movies because her parents also want her to go since this carnival has a reputation of people going missing but since her little brother knows that she is lying once they go out, he sneaks out of the house and goes behind her. Now we see the group going into the carnival. They are having fun. They are seeing creepy things and all of that. Until suddenly, the Liz, that is the best friend of Amy, her boyfriend named Richie, he has the brilliant idea that they should spend the night on the fun house. This is the typical fun house of this type of carnivals that has the little car and like animatronics and it's very cheesy, that type of thing. So they want to spend the night inside of the fun house. So that's a weird thing to ask, being honest. I will have to say no, but they all say yes. So Amy calls her parents and tells them that she's going to spend the night with Liz. And Liz calls her parents staring that she's spending the night with Amy. So everything is fine right while all of this is happening joey is on the carnival he eventually finds amy but amy has no idea that he is on the carnival not either their parents and he sees how she goes inside the fun house but she never gets out we see them when they get inside and of course then we see the cars empty and nothing happens like they are just closing but eventually joey is catch and the parents arrive to the carnival so the parents were there when the creepy things start to happen. Now, uh, once inside, they are at first just laying down, having a good time, when suddenly they hear someone on a room that is below the floor that they are now. So they look through some holes on the ground and they see a man that works on the fun house that has a Frankenstein mask and a woman that also works at the carnival. Basically, she's going to give him some sexual favors, we would say that as a prostitute, but he has a little accident and everything ends way too quickly for him and he's embarrassed but he also asking for more when she says no he asks for the money back since she will not give him the money back he kills her and now the four teenagers are the witnesses of a murder now at first no one knows that they are on the inside right well that's about to change since the father of the man will more of a kid slash man um his name is gunter and his father are returning to where the body is and he's like what the hell have you done boy this is when we had the reveal of what it's under the mask and it's an awful and ugly creature now once we see what is behind the mask is this creature that has albinism and is deformed and it's a total monster and basically barely even talks like the only thing that we hear him talk it's when he says, he says more like that's it so the four teenagers at first they want to escape 
but they are unable to. In the end, by mistake of Les boyfriend Richie, they are catch. Now Gunther's father and him, they know that someone saw them killing the woman and that someone is on the inside. From this moment to the very end of the film, it's going to turn into a cat-mouse situation when the killer is going one by one. Gunther's father is killed on the process, but we end with Amy and Gunther slash the creature. But she's able to kill him and the film basically ends and wraps up with her being able to leave the fun house and the carnival at sunrise. Now, like I said, at some point, the father and the mother of Amy, they need to arrive to the carnival to get Joey. She sees them from the inside of the fun house, but they are unable to hear her. And it's like Joey is in a state of shock because he got scared and he can talk. So basically he's not able to tell his parents like Amy got in there. And Amy is screaming her lungs out, trying to call her parents, and nothing is working. So it's a very stressful situation. Now going very straight to the things that I like. First, the soundtrack. I think that it's hella creepy, but also with the carnival team. So I think that it's a, a perfect mix and fits perfectly and it's brilliant. Secondly, the creature. Although Gunter is ugly as hell. And the very first time that I saw this film, I was around maybe six, seven, I was a child, but this is one of my mom's favorite. And I was like, this is the ugliest thing I have ever seen in my life. When it, in terms of horror movies at that moment, that was the ugliest thing. It's, it's ugly, but it's so impressive. When you really see it, it's very impressive. The makeup and everything on the mask like, looks very real. So points for that. Also, we are on the 80s, so sometimes things can look a little bit cheap or cheesy or maybe fake, but in this case, I think that it looks pretty real. So I think that that gives so many points here. Another thing that I really like is the setting. I think that a fun house or a carnival is pretty original, simple, but effective, because you could never be expecting that something like this could happen. Like, who will think of spending the night in a fun house and then being killed by a monster that works on the fun house? So I think that it's pretty original to a certain point. Because being honest, there's nothing that I do really dislike about the film. Like the from the very first moment that I saw it, I loved it. Like like I said, for me, this is an underrated slasher. But rewatching it now with more sense of judgment and also more knowledge, I can definitely see that it has some flaws. Like for example, it's very generic. But of course, it's a slasher. A slasher is a very basic formula. And... I'm not going to take points out of that because, like I said, it's 1981. We are seeing the rise of slashers, so I cannot blame a film for being like that when it's basically one of the first, we would call it. Although it's not the first, but you understand, it's on the earliest years of the rise of slashers. So there's no way for me to blame it. We can blame the sequels and all the ones that came after, but not one of the first ones. So... I do not dislike that, but that's a detail that can be seen very early. And also that although the story is original, it can turn predictable. It's not hard to predict what is going to happen and who is going to survive and who is going to die. The film doesn't have a plot twist. It doesn't have any shock factor. Like the deaths, like I think that they're creative as much as they can. Like they did what they could. They could have done it a little bit better, probably, but they did what they could. So blood, it's very little. I would say that takes away a little bit from the slasher, but just a bit. Like, I, I am not complaining because for me, the film is good. I really enjoy this film, but if I were to say things that I think they could have been better or maybe I do dislike, it would be these things. But in general speaking, I think that this film is great. The acting, that will be like the only thing that we can admit that is not the greatest, but still... I can't forgive it. Seriously, I can't forgive all of that because for me it's original, although it's predictable, <laughs> has a very good practical effects, and the soundtrack is awesome. So I think that for me those are more than okay. So I will give uh, this one an 8 out of 10 or a 4 out of 5. This one, like I said, for me is a, such an underrated film. Like it deserves more recognition. So if you have the chance to watch it, go and do it. This one was available on Shudder 
but it's not anymore but it's on video on demand if you want to rent it and maybe watch it and give it a try if you haven't watched it already but well i think that this is all for this video and this review thank you so much for watching um let me know what down below if you have ever watched this film what do you thought about it or maybe if you didn't know about it let me know and also if you have more recommendations i already have a big list of horror films that i will be reviewing in this new segment of my channel but if you want to add a little bit more you're more than welcome but well thank you so much for watching and i'm going to see you guys on my next video bye that much i know